Good morning, Oklahoma. Welcome to Cow Calf Corner on Sun Up TV. And this week, we're going to address how much milk potential or milk that cows give, their maintenance requirements, and some of these things that relate to our management of those cows. And Dave, I know you've had the opportunity here to do some unique things in this trial where you're actually milking these cows, something we wouldn't typically do in beef production, but it's permitted you to gain some insight over what's going on on some of these topics. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, we've, we've learned quite a bit and it's a really interesting topic. You know, we've discovered in our cows here at Oklahoma State anywhere from around 20 pounds up to, we've got one cow herd that routinely gives about 30 pounds of peak lactation if they're on real lush quality, lush spring forage. The things that we've found uh, make a lot of sense in terms of the energy concentration in milk is generally greater uh, than, than what the diet can support. One pound of milk, Mark, contains about 0.33, about a third of a megacalorie of energy. Lush spring forage contains about 0.7 megacals. So theoretically, one more pound of forage intake should support two more pounds of milk. The problem is the cows cannot, if they're already getting all they want to eat, and you program them genetically to produce more milk, uh, they can't consume that much more forage. That uh, The research shows that uh, for each additional pound of milk production, you get somewhere between about 0.2 to 0.3 pounds more forage intake. And so if you continue to program for more, more milk production, uh, she's gonna get a little bit more negative all the time, or, or your herd, would get a little bit more negative and you'd expect them to have a harder time maintaining their body condition. We know a lot of producers aren't gonna be milking cows, but we're relating this to, if we've got thin cows right now, what the consequence of it is, and well, I'll let you run with that one. What? Well, I mean, you know, I, I think you just have to be careful, you know, you know your, your forage system. It wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to, over the years, select for the top 10% in any breed for milk production if you're fall calving, right? Because the forage quality is gonna be low and that increased milk production is gonna require all those additional calories of energy and those cows cannot consume a much uh, enough more of that low quality forage. So there's just a really plain example. Doesn't make a lot of sense to go source bulls or sires, herd sires that have tremendous high genetic capacity for milk we need to look at as producers the amount of forage we can reasonably produce in a typical year and how to balance that with mature cow size and the milk level of those cows relative to them weaning a calf every 12 months and optimizing the amount of weaning weight they're producing relative to what it's costing to maintain them. For sure and, and the other big piece of that would be a time of calving because you know if you've got really big weaning weights uh, calve real early you're gonna have to make up that difference with some sort of purchased or harvested feed source at least in the interim until it mm -hmm. until it greens up so that's that's an important piece as well sure and as you mentioned a minute ago even we're we tend to talk a lot about spring calving herds but even Spring calving in your forage base versus fall calving in your yeah. forage base are things we need to consider in this situation. Yeah, you might you might go looking for two different kind of herd sires in that in that situation. Yeah. Well, Dave, I appreciate you being with us today and last week on this topic, and we appreciate you all joining us on Cow Calf Corner.